The American Farriers Association is proud to present part two of an exclusive four-part series on getting the most from your tools with certified journeyman farrier Roy Bloom. Don't lock everything back. Relax. Sit back, relax, and make sure that that thing comes down through the center. This exclusive presentation is brought to you by Anvil Brand. Anvil Brand is your one-stop shop for the largest inventory of hoof care products under one roof. For the biggest selection of farrier and blacksmith equipment, tools, and supplies, shop Anvil Brand on the web or call toll-free. In this segment, Roy Bloom reveals the secrets to getting the most from your hammer. Your hammer. Your hammer needs to match you as an individual. Every one of us has a different hand. You want that hammer handle to match your hand. That's important. There is no manufacturer. When you go buy a brand new hammer, the manufacturer can't fit everybody. So it's up to you to fit that handle to you. You want to put that in your hand. Put your thumb up on top. Thumb is your guide. It's going to guide the hammer through the work. A very light grip. I'll see if we can get in the light here. There we go. Okay, right there in that spot, you see there's a little gap. Not a lot, maybe about a quarter of an inch, but there is a little gap there. Now, if the hammer handle gets too narrow for my hand, I can make contact with my palm on the other side. That forces me to have to grip the handle to control it. Okay, and the same thing occurs if the handle gets too big in my hand and the gap widens out and I can barely get my fingers around, that forces me to grip the handle just to control. And that's, that's taboo. You want the handle to just sit in there and just ride. There's no grip to this. It takes a long time to get a handle broke in right. One thing I've found when I've prepped out a new handle is that I sand it as smooth as I can when I'm, when I'm finished shaping. Get it sanded nice and smooth, working down through different grits of sandpaper, maybe a bit of steel wool, something like that. Get it smooth. And then I give it one coat of linseed oil. That's it. And that gives me a good start because now I've got something on there that when I grip it, I get a little stick. You get a little sweat off your hand. And there's other stuff on your hand too, whatever you've been into for the day. That's good. But it gets tacky. Just, I mean, it's not so you can't, you got to peel your fingers off, but you can feel a tackiness to it. And that is the grip. That's how much. Just let it ride in there. Anywhere that you are in your swing, whether you're coming from up here and coming down hard or you're tapping, at any time someone should be able to walk up and snatch it right out of your hand. That's your grip. They have to fight you for it. You're gripping too much. There's one time when you're going to grip, only one time. And that is when you're working in a barn and someone of the opposite sex of who you wish to impress is approaching. Start gripping hard. Get some good licks going in so you get some cuts and chop and you get the veins poking out. And as they walk by, uh, you get that little red and then as soon as they're gone, get off it. Get off it because your elbow's killing you now. And you say, fool that. I hope she doesn't come back too often because <laughs> it's killing me. But that's the only time that there's grip in here. The edges of that hammer should be matching, like we said, to match the anvil back there, but they should also be nice and smooth. You don't want any sharp lines on that. You know, we're going to use our edges a lot. You don't want any big uh, dents and things in your hammer. Uh, keep them out. If there's an impression in your hammer, Grind it out. Clean it up. Keep it smooth. Because any impression that's there will go into the stock that you're hitting. Right? The thing about this swing deal is keeping it in the center of your body. You want it right down the middle. Everything works down your buttons. Okay? You're trying to achieve that hammerhead to float right down through the middle. All right? And that results in keeping your elbow closer to your body. As, as the swing starts to, to move outwards, 
and, and get off the center line, the elbow drifts. You have no control with your elbow way out there. You have no power. You have nothing. And the rest, only thing that can make power there is your arm from the shoulder down. It's the only thing that can generate it. You can't get your shoulders involved. You can't get your lower back involved, your, your legs. But if you can stay in the center, keep your feet planted underneath you. Not, they don't have to be right together. I mean, you're a weightlifter. Balance. Balance yourself back here. Standing back and locking one leg isn't balance either. I mean, you don't walk up to a set of barbells and pick them up like that. You know, we're lifting weights. We're working. So maintain a comfortable position. Keep your legs bent. Don't lock everything back. Relax. Sit back, relax, and make sure that that thing comes down through the center. Loose grip. The same thing's going to occur with your tongs. You want to try to keep that work right in the center too so that you're hitting right in the center. You have control. You can see it right in the middle. So what happens? Sometimes you're working. And there are some areas of the country that suffer this, uh, this problem more than others. But of occasion, there will be a sudden shift in the Earth's crust. Sometimes you can't hardly even feel it. But as you're coming down, it'll force you to completely miss your target. And you know it wasn't you, it was that sudden shift in the earth's crust, and you whack the anvil good, it comes back up and kisses you right in the face. So the first thing you do is run to the mirror on the truck, and you want to see where the blood is. Because if the blood's way over here, your elbow is out. But if you drilled yourself right in the middle, hey, that's one less thing I have to worry about. I, I was there. I got that part good. Okay, so we're working along. We work pretty close to the edge sometimes. And if you've got that really sharp edge there, if you should happen to glance and tap that edge, you want that to, to happen. You want that hammer to bounce off of it. If this is a sharp edge on here, it will cut into your hammer and the hammer will lock on that position. And all the blow will be delivered directly to the edge of that anvil. And more than likely, it'll take a chunk out of one or the other. It'll leave a cut across the hammer, or it'll peel a chunk off that. It'll compact the material into the edge of the end, and it'll just chip right out. But if you have a radius, you have a better chance of your anvil taking that hit and just glancing off, no mark, no mark. That's a real good reason for not having that cutting edge. Has anyone here ever put an anvil devil up here and missed the stock and hit the anvil devil with your hammer? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Most times the anvil devil will fly in two pieces, but when you look at your hammer, whew, that's a good one. If you take a localized heat and dip it in the oil only to the level that you heat it up, you'll form a crystal line across right at the edge of the oil. That's why the tool has to go completely under. You don't want that crystal line because the first hit that you make, it's off of there. You've just busted it in half.